We have seen that in Isaiah 9, 6. The Messiah is called Mighty God, Eternal Father. A plain reading of the text shows that the Messiah is God. It may be objected that in the New Testament, Jesus Christ is the Son, not the Father. So how can the Messiah be called Eternal Father? Well, a simple answer is this. Jesus himself said, I and the Father are one. Does it then mean that in Isaiah 9, 6, God and the Divine Messiah are two different manifestations of the same person, Yahweh, the Lord? So is there any indication in the, New, in the Old Testament that God and the Divine Messiah are two distinct persons? Well, the answer again is yes. In Daniel 7, Daniel saw marvelous visions. He says in Daniel 7, 9, As I looked, thrones were placed. And the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, its views with burning fire. Obviously, the, angel, the Ancient of Days here is the Lord God. Not that there are thrones, plural, and the Ancient of Days sits on one of them. Then Daniel further saw, and he says, And behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man, and he came to the Ancient of Days, and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, and that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, one, that shall, be, shall not be destroyed. The one like son of man here is obviously the Messiah, who is to receive an eternal kingdom, and therefore sit on the other throne. Now the term son of man means man. But here he is presented as God. Because in the Old Testament, one who comes with the cloud, that is, rides on the cloud, is God. For example, in Isaiah 19.1, it says, Behold, the Lord God, the Lord is riding on a swift cloud and comes to Egypt. This may be why Daniel said, one like a son of man, even though he obviously saw a man, because a man is not supposed to ride on clouds. That means Daniel saw a God-man. Now, in this vision, God and the Divine Messiah occurs together at the same time. So based on the plain reading of the text, God and the Divine Messiah are two distinct persons. According to Isaiah 40.10, this is the good news. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and His arm rules for Him. Now, who is this arm of God who rules for him? We have already seen that in Isaiah 51, 9-10. The arm of the Lord is the person who, in generation long ago, dried up the sea, who made the depths of the sea a pathway for the redeemed to cross over. So, he is God. Then in Isaiah 53, 1, the question, And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? This question is about the revelation of the suffering servant, the Messiah. So the arm of the Lord is the Messiah. Finally, this is what we read in Isaiah 63, 7-14. I will recount the steadfast love of the Lord. For he said, Surely they are my people. And he became their saviour. In all their affliction he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and grieved His Holy Spirit. Therefore, He turned to be the enemy and Himself fought against them. Where is He who put in the midst of them His Holy Spirit? Who caused His glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses, who divided the waters before them? Like livestock that go down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. Let me summarize what it is actually saying. Though it was the Lord, the God of the Old Testament, who became their Savior, it was actually the angel of His presence who saved them. Later, He turned and became the enemy because they rebelled and grieved His Holy Spirit, who had earlier caused His glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses, who divided the waters and thus saved them. Now, the angel of His presence is obviously the well-known angel of the Lord. 
a manifestation of God in the Old Testament. He is said to have saved them and carried them all the days of old. The Hebrew phrase translated the days of old here refers to the redemptive activities of the angel of his presence or the angel of the Lord. It is the same phrase in Isaiah 63 itself. The angel of his presence plays the same role that he saved them as, his, as God's glorious arm, which he saw is the Messiah. So therefore, there is evidence that the angel of the Lord is the second person of the Trinity. So in this text, the Lord God, the Messiah, and the Holy Spirit are all mentioned separately, but acting together as the Saviour.